Good day. My name is Munir Ajam. I am the founder and CEO of Oruk Project Management. This video is part of uh, many videos we've recorded on the Oruk platform. However, this is part of a, tri a trio uh, that one of them focus on why is the Oruk platform a truly fantastic solution. Uh, that is one video focusing on the why. Uh, this uh, presentation, audio presentation, basically video presentation focuses on the what which means what is the Oruk platform and we get deeper into the product uh, and we discuss it as the status of the platform as of today, uh, which is today is November 26, 2022. And there's a third video that is about uh, the personal professional video about myself as the person behind the Oruk platform and the Oruk initiative. So the Oruk innovator basically. Uh, let's focus in this video on uh, the Oruk platform itself as a product. So what is that product? And we will touch on purpose and some other information. Uh, so purpose of Oruk PM is uh, basically to help project management uh, organization, support organization to maximize shareholder value and deliver success consistently. We want to insist on that because when we look at organizational project management and institutional project management, uh, we're talking about consistent success among all team members, not only basically uh, that could vary from one project manager to another. As a technology enabled pro solution, and so we will, we will go into this. I'm not going to read, so let's just jump in. Jump into it. What exists today? If you log in today, or maybe to be academically correct, maybe next week, right? Because uh, the program management element will go live shortly. You should be able to see the Uruk home screen like this that has these four, we call them elements. So the Uruk platform today consists of four elements, managing a program, managing a project, uh, administrative component, and community of practice element. So it's a collaborative, highly adaptive digital product solution. If we talk about what is a Rook platform, it's a methodological solution that covers the entire product delivery lifecycle. I covered this extensively in, in the Y video, but it, I will touch on this also here. Um, and basically, uh, uh, it, it, it's help organization shorten product delivery lifecycle. Uh, time, maximize the possibility of achieving cost and schedule target. Again, we covered a lot of these in the other video, so let me not go deeper into them here. Uh, what are the primary functionalities? So if we look at uh, the platform as a product today, what can we do inside that, that product? Uh, we can manage project across the entire life cycle. We, can, we have stage gate processes. We have stage management uh, how do you manage every stage using the stage management processes? Uh, we have built-in template and shared files. Benefit management is indirectly built in at this point in time. Uh, the collaboration at various levels, the knowledge portal, the performance chart, uh, and you can read the rest. When it comes to PM function, right now we have simplified modules for project management functions such as scope management cost and all of these areas. Again, we say simplified because at this point in time and the development uh, roadmap, uh, what we wanted to produce here is just some basic information where we can do a lot of data entry in order to produce performance chart. So when executive want to know how are the project are doing, they don't need to go to ask for different reports and different software. They can see everything from here. So basically these, simple, uh, these project management function are simplified as placeholder uh, to generate the performance management. In the future, we will be able to expand on each one of these and create a much more advanced modules. It's a standard, uh, remember we talk about product delivery, and again, uh, I emphasize a lot of this in the other video, so let's not, I'm not gonna go back and talk about it. Uh, it just generally is a product lifecycle concept that covering the project, a product delivery from the start to finish. Uh, it has adaptability, so there are many tailored methods, uh, and these are examples of some of the tailored methods that we have built in. And as of today, we have 49 tailored methods built to cover different areas. Now, these are very generic high-level methods. 
uh, organization. However, the key things here is that we can work with any organization to do things uh, specific to them. We can build tailored method to any organization uh, together as we work with them in, in a collaborative environment, co-creation, co-create as co-creators uh, to uh, develop solutions specific to them if they require that. However, if they don't have any processes themselves and they are happy with uh, what we can provide, they can use any of these methods that we built in uh, as soon as they subscribe. The, we remember we mentioned it covers the entire world life cycle. So this is another screenshot from the platform. And what this shows uh, clearly is basically, obviously the darker, the black font is these are work that has been completed. Orange is where we are. So in this specific case, the screenshot is showing that we have done the concept stage to produce a project brief. We got approval at gate one. We have done the feasibility study and it's been submitted for the sponsor for review. So right now the project is sitting with the sponsor and if there is a steering committee to review the stage gate uh, at the stage gate two and decide whether to continue or not. So the project right now is there. And as a result, you notice everything else here is light gray because technically you cannot access them. As a project manager, I cannot go work on the requirement stage right now unless stage grade two is authorized. This is part of the governance that we have implemented into the system. Uh, so a stage will only open uh, based on the criteria that is established and primarily at the gate. If we talk about managing every stage, remember we talk about we manage a project across the entire life cycle. However, to achieve success across the entire life cycle, we need to manage every stage. And here where we use stage management and we have two, mod two type of approaches used in the platform today. And you can choose either one, depend. I mean, in some, in some method, we are not giving you a choice. Basically, we're saying, look, uh, these are small project, micro project. You only need the simplified stage management that we show here, which is like the, uh, you know, a simplified version of the process group that PMI and ISO talk about, right? You, you know, you plan initiations happening at the, at the gate. So you plan, you develop the work, execute the work, you control and you close. Uh, and, and each one of these steps are, the processes are quite simplified. There, there is no complicated processes here. Very, very, very simplified. Uh, that sounds like an oxymoron, it's simplified. I don't have to say very, very simplified. It's simplified. Uh, so in some project and some tailored method, it's, uh, you only have that option. Some other project, you might have the advanced option that I will share in a second. But in some other project, you might, and, and depend on which stage you are in, uh, within the same method, sometime you find, for example, some stages that use this, some stages use the, the, the advanced module, or you have a choice. Now, what is the advanced module? This is a, uh, based on uh, our CAMP methodology, the Customizer and Adaptable Methodology for Managed Project, which we published it in the Project Management Beyond Waterfall and Agile book and where we use the ISO uh, stage management process groups and we modify them. Now, if you notice here, there is authorization is initiation. Planning, we split it into two areas. And I, again, I don't, uh, in this video, I'm not gonna go into detail. We'll be happy to, uh, to have a, mo a more detailed discussion about the methodology itself. Uh, however, uh, basically in, in for, for, the for the purpose of this video, we split planning into two parts. We have, we focus on managing versus the detail plan that include, for example, and the word detail here, please be, you know, I know my, some agile people might react to this one. It doesn't have to be, you know, infinite detail. It's detailed enough for the purpose of the project to allow us to move forward, right? It could be semi-detailed, it could be rough detail, uh, but at least this is the plan that we will use for implementation. And then we have implementation, you have control and you have close. Here we introduce the concept of process gate as well. However, these are more for, they are not like the sponsor. This is a project manager can approve uh, just to make sure that uh, the team, uh, because you know, obviously these will be used in bigger project, uh, more complex, larger project. So in this case, it's not the project manager doing this work, it's probably a project management team doing this work. 
So we allow, we get the chance here for the project manager to review all the work and approve uh, this process gate before, uh, as they move through managing every stage. Then we have stage gate criteria for every method. So let's say your company, your organization selected three tailored method they wanna work on, and these are the three tailored method they will use for all their project. Uh, you, your company admin or somebody within your organization can go on and select each one of those tailored methods and set the default stage gate criteria, all the stage gate uh, criterion for each method. Uh, now, if they are the same for all methods, great, you just copy paste. Uh, but if they're not the same, then you have the option. Each method will have different stage gate and could have its own unique criteria. These are established in the organization at, at rollout and then uh, you know during the onboarding process and after that uh, you basically uh, or you can modify them at any time you don't have to put them during the onboarding obviously during the onboarding it can help you but after the onboarding you can anytime you can come and then uh, add these things now how what do we use this now those are set default however they're not set in stone so let's say we work on a project and the project chose method one method one have nine gates let's use this example as method one so if method one have these nine gate the criteria are established as a sponsor i can go through the, or the steering committee i can go through this and said okay stage gate one criteria looks good two good three good four no i want to change it right uh, so i have the power to go in and modify any of these gate for my given project but remember this is not the pm that is doing this the sponsor is the one who have the authority to do this. So as a sponsor, I can modify the criteria, the default criteria for the current project. Obviously, if there has to be a good justification uh, and I should be accountable for that. Right. So that's one way we can do it. And another way we can do it at the stage gate review with the steering committee and the decision maker sitting at the gate, as a group in that case, they could also decide to change the, the criteria for a given gate. Now, we don't recommend this, and maybe down the road from a governance perspective, we should prevent this. However, at this time, we, we are leaving some flexibility uh, in order to, to provide. Uh, we don't want to dictate on you, basically. The, the one part of it here is that how much can we, can we demand or can we implement and control and force it? And how much can we, look, we're telling you that we believe governance wise you should not change the criteria however it's your choice at the end of the day so we provide you the recommendation and the guidance uh, and not only in this area and many other areas as well uh, uh, we provide the guidance and we provide where we believe it's a must from a governance perspective we mandate it right for example the stage gate you cannot go start start working on stage three unless stage gate two is approved uh, if you need to modify that, again, we can discuss that. And then the, the, there is some flexibility. However, we need to discuss to make sure that uh, basically we, you, we don't, you understand uh, the proper governance and then what needs to be implemented. Now, if somebody wants to basically defeat all the governance items that we've Im implemented in the system, um, we might say, thank you. Uh, we're not interested in doing business with you. Right. Uh, so we want to provide uh, great flexibility. We want to be very agile. However, at the same time, uh, there are certain things uh, that uh, that shouldn't be uh, touched. Uh, when you set up a new project, uh, there's a lot usually in project management, many work packages and project management planning work packages. They are similar from all projects. Uh, so why do you need to go and do a lot of data entry? So what we are trying to do here for each method is to provide you a template MS project schedule template. So you can download this to your project and you can update it. And with every stage, if you follow ro rolling wave planning, with every stage, you can update the plan for every, every stage. And then you link it to your platform uh, and that will will move those whatever you decide to link. You can link the whole thing, or you can link stage by stage. Uh, when we do the demos, we will demonstrate how we do this. Um, so basically, uh, all of these things that are here, 
that will go to task management, to, to the task. So you don't have to re-enter the task. All what you need to do in that case, and, and task management just go in and start to assign them to the different people that need to work on them. So this is one of the things that is there. Uh, another thing is we mentioned simplified project management function earlier. At this time, this is what we have in terms of function. At 10, uh, we want to add more. Obviously, if you look at this, you don't see quality, for example. You don't see health and safety. Uh, you don't see procurement. Uh, there are a lot of things still to be developed and added uh, as part of our product road. And they are as part of our product roadmap vision. Task management, for example, you can see task as a list, which is not shown here, or you can see it as a calendar view or as a Kanban view, your choice. Uh, and you can move, for example, in Kanban, obviously, as you do work, you can move a task from here to, uh, to in progress, to testing, whatever the case might be. You can uh, change the name if you want. We can, we can modify them for you. And then, uh, of course, if you, if you move, if you drag and move, a task here uh, that automatically updates on the calendar view on the list view as well. Uh, collaboration across uh, everywhere, as we mentioned, there are a lot of collaboration. Now here, I'm, what I'm showing you on this slide, uh, this is a typical template of a stage deliverable. Right? It's empty, we're not showing any data, but basically the, this, is, uh, uh, this is not a complete one. Obviously this is just a snapshot that includes some of the item we covered in our project requirement. What do we think you need to do? Uh, now, in many situations, if for example, uh, where you have some, the, the project manager have some tailoring capability, is that, well, if this is something here doesn't apply, you can just put NA, not applicable. You cannot delete it. Uh, and if you feel like, ah, oh, there is something that you cover that we did not include, uh, you don't see it on the screen here, but uh, usually at the bottom of this form, there is a place where you can add information block, so you can add something, as many as you want, or you can add attachment. Uh, the purpose of the slide is focusing more on communication and collaboration, and usually the only person that can do work in one of these is the team member uh, that assigned to this. For example, I can assign the description of the product to George, and only George can do work there, unless, uh, uh, sorry, only George, and myself, if I am the project manager, right? If I'm the project manager, assign somebody the task, the only two people that can do work here is that basically that person who's assigned and the project manager. And notice here we have linked task. This is where we link to task management, to the tasks that we have downloaded from MS Project or added ourselves. And there is a collaboration piece here that any team, in this case, any team member, not only George or Munir, any team member can actually come review what work has been done here uh, and then put some comments. And at the end of the day, when everybody, when everybody finished their work, the project manager in the team can sit down and review. And if they're happy, they submit to the stage gate. Now, what happened at the stage gate? Uh, remember, I mentioned that the stage gate criteria. Here is where the team that is the decision maker. Well, let me start on this box. The decision maker that are participating in that meeting, it could be only the sponsor, so we don't have to enter anything. Uh, but if there are a group of people, a steering committee, different managers that might be involved, we can enter all their information here. Uh, so basically you click on this and you go in and you enter all the, the data, uh, the relevant data about those people. And then of course, these people can come and look at the stage gate criteria and see if they're happy with it, at least, or at least they need to understand it. And what we mentioned earlier that at this time we are allowing that uh, this team to change that if there is needed. And then they, the team will uh, can uh, basically look at the stage deliverable or deliverable because there could be more than one. Uh, usually we're trying to combine one and then uh, they can have uh, and, and under the stage deliverable review, this is a place where if they, they want to put rec a record of the meetings, they put notes, uh, whatever, they could do that as well before they make a decision. Uh, here we have the collaboration and we have uh, from this button you can do team chat, you can create groups and then or chat with anybody within the organization and of course you can do community discussion from here as well. There is a knowledge portal, not everything is populated yet. Uh, there are about 17 ebooks already uploaded, you can read them free of charge. 
uh, we are providing a lot of guidelines and case studies. We have not uploaded anything yet, but we will in due time. Community library is for you. This is basically where the user can add their own. Not, I mean, this is not your internal library. That's as part of document management system. Your own project and data as an organization sit in your document management section of the platform, and that's internal to you only. This is a library where people, anybody, any user from the Rook platform anywhere in the world, they can basically add uh, files here to share with the community. If they want to share some case studies, some uh, other information, uh, obviously uh, not proprietary or, or uh, confidential information, they can come and share it here. Uh, so they can enhance the knowledge and uh, of the community. So this is why creating a community of practice, basically. Uh, quickly here, a rook by the numbers. Uh, some people like numbers and statistics. Uh, rook vision is to have eight element. With four, so far, we built four. They are uh, the vision include many functional center. So far, we have nine built. We have thirty eight modules. Uh, what what classify a module is a section in the platform uh, that include many processes, right? So basically, these 38 modules have 85 processes among them. There are 65 document template forms that are have been built into the system, or some of them you can actually download, Excel file, Word document. Uh, the, some of them will be there available for you for download, and some of them are built into the platform itself. Uh, then there are tailored method, as of today there are 49 tailored method. There are 46 performance metrics that are used for 33 performance chart. And uh, work packages, uh, this is what we call the project management work packages, the stuff that could repeat. In term of PM functions and action, there are 16. We showed you 10 and there were six uh, in another screen that we did, another screenshot we did not share. At this time, there are only two type of report you can generate from here. Obviously, I mean, when I say only two report, that is when you do a status report or a stage report. However, obviously, every deliverable, it could be produced uh, and exported into document management system and shared with people outside if you, if you need to share as PDF or document. So you can do a lot of export of uh, stage information and, and, uh, and export them but we don't classify those as report. In the knowledge portal, the library right now, there are 27 items. As I had mentioned, 17 of those are eBooks that I, I wrote. They are available for you uh, to, to read. And uh, shortly, we will be starting to do a lot of uh, tutorial demos. Over the next maybe a month or two, we will be uploading them into the platform as well. At uh, the platform roadmap vision, remember we mentioned there should be eight elements. Uh, this is basically what those eight elements are. Uh, technically, uh, a committee of practice, administrative managing a project, and the program managing a program is coming live right now. Some PM functions are already there, but have not, however, we don't consider that as something that is as an independent element yet. And that is probably first quarter next year where we start to do uh, to maybe elevate this from more of a support uh, module into a major modules into the platform. In terms of uh, the product roadmap uh, to achieve what I just shared with you over a lifetime, this is a tentative schedule at this stage. And as you can see, we still have, you know, potentially two to three years uh, of more development to achieve the current vision. This is not to count anything else that could come up from collaboration and partnership that we can add incorporate into the platform so what's next uh, the tentative plan for the next year including you know coming december uh, we're going to continue uh, uh, when it comes to tailored method basically we um, on we will be adding tailored method on demand basis on as needed basis we can do them very quickly uh, we can add we will continue to add performance chart and report as we identify new opportunities as well uh, we continue development of program management. Now, let me clarify this. Uh, shortly, we will be releasing the first iteration of program management. Now, what does it mean? It includes, and I did not show any slide on that uh, because it's not officially live yet. 
uh, basically it's how do you manage a program including the program life cycle so the entire program life cycle what's not included yet is for example we have not created performance chart for the program yet and there are other things that we want to create uh, that we have not created them yet so this is why we call this is the first iteration and with every there could be two to three more or maybe more uh, iteration in the future each one of them will be adding more functionalities uh, so iteration or increment a project management function enhancement I had already touched we will start working on this in January portfolio management tentatively in the second quarter next year uh, advanced addition and organization integration uh, those will be future items and with this we say thank you uh, this was a very quick overview uh, very quick and took 25 minutes uh, overview of the product as it exists today so with this basically now you understand you have a video that talks about why a group platform and why is it a fantastic solution where we really get deeper into i think the power for the feature and the differentiating factors of the rook platform and in this one we focus mostly on giving you insight into the product not in, in a presentation mode not in a demo mode and we have a third video that talks about myself as a uh, and my career and life and how does that lead to a rook platform and uh, we are starting to produce also uh, quite a few d demo educational videos that we will be starting to produce as of today and then so they will we will upload them uh, gradually but those are more demo videos into the platform where we are actually showing you uh, basically screenshot and we're going we're actually going through the platform uh, and then uh, we will do also demo tutorial so basically those will be the demo educational will be more of uh, myself doing them so I will be going through demonstrating the platform at the same time maybe elaborating project management wise maybe give some ideas some suggestions about governance and all of those kind of things so they are educational in nature and then later on we will have uh, another team member a, a young intern uh, that would be who's my son it, it happened to be my son he's studying uh, computer science and uh, basically he will be supporting us uh, in recording some of the actual uh, but more more technical tutorials so basically going through the platform and do quick tutorials that we can include those tutorials will include in the platform uh, so for example you are working on project setup and you want to see uh, a quick short video on it you, you can go to that uh, you can do you click a button and that should take you to that tutorial that uh, Sumar would be uh, probably recording and uh, if you want some educational content maybe you will come to our YouTube channels and to look for the videos that are that include some more elaboration about the project management behind the platform uh, we end with uh, saying great thank you uh, we wish you success today tomorrow and always take care